Hey guys, back here with Tua for another video. In this video, I'm going to start experimenting with a raw food diet with Tua here. It's been something that I've been asked a lot about, and I've had a lot of questions about it myself. So I've been doing a lot of research since I've gotten him, and asking a lot of questions um, to a lot, a lot of viewers like you guys, and on message boards and stuff, and I think I'm starting to get kind of a grasp on it and I'm comfortable enough trying. And what my plan is, is I'm just going to slowly ease him into this over five days. And I'm gonna use mainly chicken. I might do some hamburger if I feel like he's uh, reacting to this well. And what my plan is, at least tentatively, to start off, is on day one, I'm gonna give him two ounces of chicken mixed with his regular food, and then I'm gonna up that each day by one ounce. So day one, it'll be two ounces with breakfast and two ounces with dinner for a total of four ounces. Day two, it'll be three ounces with breakfast, three ounces with dinner for a total of six ounces. And by day five, he'll have six ounces with breakfast, six ounces with dinner for a total of 12 ounces. Getting heavy, man. So if he has any kind of bad reactions with this, it'll just be abort mission altogether and we'll scrap it. But from everything that I've been reading, it shouldn't really be an issue. So we'll go ahead and see, and we're just gonna go ahead and experiment with this. And I, when I'm mixing this with his food, I'll also be taking some of his kibble away so that he's not overeating. But let's go ahead and just get into this. So real quick, here's just some pros and cons of the raw diet. Shiny and healthy coat and skin, physically fit with better energy levels, clean teeth and less odors, smaller droppings, simple weight control, improvement for joints, more muscle, can help improve allergies, less water intake, and here's some of the risks. Bacteria, while humans and dogs react to bacteria differently, there's a debate that the bad bacteria in raw meat can be harmful to dogs. In addition, it's potential risk to humans in handling the food. So everything I'm reading here, guys, is dog stomachs and the way they digest is a lot different than us, where if we eat raw food, we'll get sick, but their stomachs are designed to have that raw food because that's how they always did it in the wild, where humans have been cooking food for however many years. And there's some choking hazards with bones and big chunks of meat. So I just wanted to read over a couple of those quick with you guys, the pros and cons. Lots of pros, not too many cons. So I've had his food soaking here for a little bit. And as you guys know, I like to soak his kibble in water just to soften it up. And what I have here is just a regular old chicken breast that you'd buy at the store. I have my food scale right here as well so that we can uh, weigh it up. So we'll go ahead and get this zeroed in. And like I said, I'm just gonna start out with two ounces here for breakfast. So our scale's zeroed in here. And I'm not sure exactly what the amount's gonna be here, so we'll start with a chunk like that and see what that weighs. So that's about 1.7 ounces. Take another little chunk off here. That's about 2.2, so I'll cut off just a hair. And that's two right on the nose. So now that I have my two ounces, I think what I'm gonna do is cut this up into little pieces here. Because I kinda almost want it to blend in with his regular dog food at first and almost be unnoticeable to him other than you know maybe some added flavor. So I'm gonna cut this up real fine, at least to start. Maybe as the wheat goes on, I'll change my mind. And if you guys are experienced with this, definitely let me know any tips or any good things to read about it, anything like that. Because like I said, I'm completely new to this. I've just began researching it since I've gotten Tua. Heard a lot of good things about it. And uh, just trying to gain as much, as much knowledge about it as I possibly can. And I don't really have any intention, at least as of right now, to turn him into a completely raw diet, but I could definitely see myself using it periodically or at least mixing stuff in with his meals at all times, like I'm gonna try this week.
Okay guys, we're kind of winding down here for the night. And just one thing to make note of, as far as the first day went, um, he'll usually poop two or three times a day, um, right after his breakfast. And then sometimes he will um, midday, and then he always does right after his dinner also. So his first two poops were just regular old hard poops. And the last one after dinner was a little bit soft. It definitely was not diarrhea, but it, it definitely was not like a normal poop. But it's nothing too concerning because he's usually good for one or two of those a week. So it definitely could have just been coincidence or it could have been from the raw. So time will tell. But I've also, with all the reading that I've done, I've also seen that that's pretty common when you're doing a slow transition like this is their poop will be a little bit softer, so. Nothing too concerning either way, but just something to make note of. Otherwise, everything was completely normal. He ate his food like normal. Didn't really seem to be more interested or less interested in it. Just scarfed it down like always. Okay guys, morning of day two. Just wanted to follow him outside and check on his stool and see if it ends up being another soft one or if it's looking more like normal. I'll save you guys the glory of actually seeing it and just let you know. Okay guys, so it was a normal firm stool today. Not soft like it was last night. So last night could have just been a fluke. But that definitely makes me feel better that that stool is back to normal. Hey guys, we're about ready for bed here. Day two in the books of experimenting with this raw diet. Nothing really to make note of today. Everything went, everything went like it would normally had he not been eating it. Um, I do think I'm gonna go to the store tomorrow and maybe try and get some different types of meat since he seems to be responding to the chicken really well. But I'll go ahead and update you guys on that. Hey guys, morning of day three. He just went out after breakfast to go to the bathroom and again it was a completely normal stool so everything seems to be going just fine. The amounts of food that he's getting now is going to be up kind of significantly. Well not significantly but an ounce of time like I was telling you guys. But it's going to start being quite a bit per day so it will be interesting to see as we lessen that kibble and increase the raw if that changes that stool again or not. Time will tell. Okay guys, just got out of the store, went and got him some more chicken and a little bit of hamburger. And then I also came across these uh, chicken feet, pretty gross looking, I get it. But uh, this is uh, good for them. Be 
because it gives them a different type of tissue to be eating and a little bit of bone and they need that bone in their diet for calcium and some other nutrients and a common misconception that people don't understand is you think chicken bones are supposed to be really bad for dogs and that is true but only if they're cooked because when they're cooked they get hard and splinter and that's where you run into issues when they're not cooked it's just fine for dogs so we'll see how he reacts to these i haven't decided if i'm going to give them to him tonight or tomorrow morning i'm leaning towards tomorrow morning so that if he has any stomach issues with them that i can deal with that throughout the day and don't have to deal with it at night so just wanted to update you guys okay guys so dinner time here tonight like i was thinking i decided to wait on the chicken feet until tomorrow morning just in case it didn't agree with his stomach i'd rather deal with uh diarrhea during the day tomorrow than during the night tonight when we're trying to sleep but i do have his uh chicken foot and his five ounces of chicken uh measured out here for tomorrow and i think i'm gonna cut that chicken foot up because it is kind of big it'll just make it a little bit easier for him to eat but that's for tomorrow and otherwise we'll get his four ounces of chicken here for tonight Another normal healthy looking poop so everything seems to be going just fine guys okay guys breakfast time here day four and like I said last night I just wanted to go ahead and cut this chicken foot up into smaller pieces since it is pretty big I rather have him not be choking on it and chewing on it So that's what it looks like now after getting it cut up pretty small. Uh, right in the middle of it where it was a thicker bone, it was kind of tough, but I got it into pretty small pieces. So we'll go ahead and get it added in here. And as you guys saw, he scarfed that food right down. Another normal poop here this morning. So no problems in that department at all. It's gonna be interesting to see how his stomach reacts now by tonight after eating that chicken foot specifically. And then also just with those that chicken going up versus kibble going down. Sit. No. Stay. Stay. Good boy. Good morning guys, it's day five, morning of the last day here of this raw diet experiment. Um, I have his six ounces of food here. I'm gonna get his chicken foot cut up. Up to this point, he's had no bad reactions uh, that I can tell. So it's been pretty good. Today is gonna be obviously the most that he's had. It's gonna be a 12 ounce day total. So it's gonna be a lot of chicken mixed in there. I did get him some hamburger when I went to the store the other day. But I decided against uh, mixing that in. I'm gonna stick just to the chicken this week. Um, I feel like he's doing so well with it that I, I don't wanna screw it up by introducing something new right now. So I'm not going to, but maybe in the future I'll go ahead and try that. But let's go ahead and uh, get your stuff cut up here and get you fed, huh buddy? Thank you. 
another normal poop here, guys. His body seems to react, be reacting to it just fine. One thing I guess that I just kind of noticed now is I would say that his poop was maybe a little bit smaller than normal, which from everything that I was reading, that is possible because they digest more of the raw versus kibble. More of it becomes uh, stuff that they would poop out. But could be coincidence, but just something to make note of. So that was the last meal of this little five day experiment with the raw diet. He had another normal poop. So my plan now is to go back to regular kibble and I'm just gonna kinda think about this and give it a couple days to digest in my mind. And uh, then I'll record the last ending of this video and give you guys my, my thoughts on the raw diet going forward. It's been a couple of days now, guys, since I experimented with this raw food diet. And he definitely seemed to like it. I've noticed now that we went back to his regular food at least the first couple of times. He didn't attack it with quite the same intensity that he was with the raw. It almost seemed like he was kind of thinking, well, where is the chicken? Um, but not that he didn't attack it. He just seemed to maybe hesitate a little bit the first couple of times but now he's kind of completely back to normal. So he definitely liked it. But what I have to say on it is I'm not ready yet with heavy emphasis on the yet to do a full-time full raw diet. I think I'm definitely going to keep incorporating it occasionally and trying new meats as I'm incorporating it occasionally to see how he reacts to it. And I'm gonna to continue to research and learn during this time. And it basically came down to a couple different reasons why I'm not ready to go into it full time yet. Um, and the first one is something that I didn't even really think about going into it, but I kind of learned after the first couple of days. And that is when I started this, I noticed how much Tua goes and licks on our kids, on their hands, on their face, their bodies, his toys, which then they end up touching, um, their toys when they don't put them away, coffee table, furniture, uh, and they're playing with him, and everything like that. And I started to think to myself pretty quickly, I wonder how long that bacteria from all that raw food is staying in his mouth, on his tongue, everything like that. And it really kind of turned me off in a way to it. Um, so I, I was a little bit concerned about that because little kids, you know, they're obviously not as good at hand washers and especially like our youngest, she's not even two yet, hands in her mouth and things like that. So anybody that would know kind of the science behind that, I guess, how long is that raw stuff going to stay in their mouth, the bacteria, possible salmonella, things like that. If you have any idea on that, go ahead and let me know. Is, is that a danger to, to kids, or am I completely overthinking that? I, I don't know, but it just kind of turned me off to it. Um, and the second thing would be that, and this one isn't a huge deal, but it's definitely more work and more time. Not a lot more work and a lot more time, um, but definitely a little bit more. And I'm sure I would get a lot faster as I got used to it and got into a routine um, and definitely you could get into a meal prep routine on the weekend and prep all your meals uh, for the week. I think I'm definitely going to revisit this as he gets older and as my kids get a little bit older too. But all in all, I mean, I, I barely even touched, barely even scratched the surface on the raw diet as a whole in this video. There's so much more that goes into it. I, I only use chicken in this video, and there's so many more meats you can use, and organ meats, and tissue meats, and bones, and things like that. And I also didn't do it long enough to notice any of the benefits that you read about. The long-term benefits of helping their coat and things like that. 
But, you know, this video was never meant to do that. It was meant just to simply dip my toes in the water a little bit, get some experience with it, see how he reacts to it. And I also hope that any of you that are on the fence about it, this maybe gave you a little push in the direction to go ahead and try. Not that I'm saying in any way, shape, or form that you guys should do this, because I'm not experienced with it. Um, I'm not a professional in any way whatsoever. I'm just sharing my journey with you guys and my experiences with you guys. So definitely don't um, do anything that I would tell you to do and take that as any sort of professional advice, especially in something like this with the diet that you're giving your dog. But if you were already on the fence about it, this, this maybe shows you that uh, it is possible to do. And it's not too big a deal either, at least in my experience. And that's all I really have to say about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it was a really long one. If you're still watching now, I really, really appreciate it. And uh, you guys take care. Have a good rest of your day. And we will do a pup date tomorrow, week 21. Have a good day, guys.